to hear with an episode of Chord Play, and this is the Chords of the Sword, and the Sword formed in Austin, Texas in 2003, and I've definitely been following them for a number of years, and I think it's interesting that they started as kind of a stoner and doom metal band, and then slowly kind of shifted, you know, somewhere around the Warp Riders album, they kind of started to turn more into a progressive rock band, and now I consider them more prog rock and hard rock than the doom and stoner metal, you know, influences when they first started. guitarists in the band, you know, John and Kyle, they definitely have, you know, a long list of influences. And you can definitely hear Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, you know, a little bit of Thin Lizzy. I hear some Kiss kind of hiding in there. And then you can also hear groups like the Melvins, you know, in their kind of sludgy, you know, riff rock sound. So uh, it's interesting when you look at a band and you really start peeling the layers back and discovering, you know, their influences and who they were inspired by. And it's useful to do that. You know, if you really want to tap into a group and really understand their music, you have to trace, you know, their influences back to where they kind of had their original, you know, spark of inspiration to, you know, start playing guitar, start playing music. For me personally, and some of the viewers out there too, you may have first heard of The Sword in 2006 because their song Freya was in the, uh, the popular video game, you know, Guitar Hero 2. And I totally had, you know, an Xbox 360 back in the day, and I bought Guitar Hero 2, and I remember, you know, playing that song um, in the video game. And then eventually I had students that started coming in, you know, for their lessons, and they were asking for the sword. And I realized, like, hey, this band is becoming more popular. And the next thing I knew, you know, they continued to put out albums, and they had a lot of tours. And definitely a really interesting group, you know, when you start looking at their music and some of the things they've accomplished and done. All right, with the opening, that was Cloak of Feathers from Apocryphon. That's one of my favorite songs from The Sword. And we're in C tuning. So the first half of this lesson is going to be in C tuning, which is basically standard tuning, but it's down two whole steps. So it's much lower than regular, you know, standard tuning. And then the second half of the lesson is basically just going to be down a half step. So they've kind of changed their kind of tuning preferences, you know, in more recent albums like High Country, Youth Future, and then some of the earlier uh, releases and songs, you know, were in C tuning. But with this, we're basically, you know, just pummeling that E power chord. And then there's a series of, uh, you know, single notes in the riff. And it's just one of those powerful, you know, hard rock riffs, really. <laughs> There's really nothing, you know, crazy technical happening chord-wise. It's just power chords and single notes, but I really love that powerful, just hard-hitting sound that they get. And I like how that riff is kind of answering, you know, the first time it kind of hit that G and the second time it goes to A. And then when it moves to D, kind of change the riff up a little bit and create that and then the second time so the sword's definitely a great band to you know notice and kind of learn from as far as you know these hard hitting you know rock guitar riffs and hard rock riffs and metal riffs too um and there's just a lot of aggression and this kind of attitude, you know, in a lot of their songs, and I like that. <laughs> Next we have the song Apocryphon, and uh, it starts off with this kind of clean, dissonant, uh, kind of implied, you know, dyads or partial chords, and then it gets into this heavy, you know, uh, heavy riff again. So something like this. And 
And I believe that's Kyle playing that part, but that's just an E, you know, unison in the beginning. And then a little piece of E, it's like an E5. And then a little piece of A. And then that's kind of like an implied F major 7. And that kind of dissonant uh, dyad that's in there. And then the song just kind of continues there and it keeps building. And then eventually they hit this. <laughs> like that you know it's just sludgy and heavy very sabbath you know kind of inspired and it's even higher on the on the neck you know almost kind of like tony iomi would play <laughs> are just kind of packed in that little box formation there you know the E to the D and then the A to the G back to the E and up next is the song The Sundering which is the opening track from Gods of the Earth and it's this finger pick that's actually played I believe on a nylon string guitar but I just stayed on the Les Paul since we were already tuned down to C tuning and it's something like this it's finger style and I just like the way he kind of arranged the chords here creates this kind of hypnotic, you know, dreamlike, uh, you know, progression. And you're hearing the notes kind of sustain and overlap, you know, as the, the chords move through that progression. And that's an E, you know, power chord. And then move over to this G5. And that's basically a D major right here. Put that together. All right, up next we have the song Buzzards, which is from High Country, and you can see I've changed to the Strat, and we've also changed tuning. So now we're tuned a half step down. We've kind of left you know, the C tuning that we started this lesson with. And this, you know, like I said, mentioned earlier in the lesson, this is kind of the territory that the sword has kind of occupied, you know, in more recent albums. High Country, Use Future, and they've kind of left, you know, the C tuning in the, in the past, I guess. And this is a simple riff, but uh, I really like this song, and anytime I have it on, I find myself kind of singing along and grooving along. It's just got this great feel. And I've talked about this in other episodes of chord play. You know, the music that you write and that you work on, it doesn't necessarily have to be hard to play for it to be good. You know, a lot of great music, it's very simple as far as, you know, the parts of the song or the melody and things like that. So you don't have to have crazy time signature changes and shredding and all this crazy stuff to have a good song. And this is just one of those, you know, tight, kind of cut and dry, you know, hard rock songs. <laughs> around a B power chord and you're kind of sliding that you know from A back into B and then you're just really doing the single note riff there on the A string between E and D and then sliding up to that F sharp so it's very simple but it's really effective and it just has that rocking kind of groove rock sound <laughs> does the same thing, you know, between G and A. Up 
next we have the song Ghost Eye, which is also from High Country, and it looks like this. <laughs> based around, you know, once again, simple chords, power chords, and it kind of reminds me of, you know, some early, you know, kind of 70s or 80s, you know, rock guitar, but uh, you're kind of playing off this A power chord, and then this D to C, and it's kind of going back to that A and kind of playing with those single notes, you know, the, the G note, the open A, and the C right there. Kind of repeat that first part again and then he starts walking up e f to g power chords and then back to that a and then that single g and single c on the low e and a strings again and then you repeat it there it's gonna move you know between C and D power chords and kind of eventually up to that E and then go right back to that A power chord again and then basically it moves right into the next part of the song here's the next part from Ghost Eye and this is the verse and it moves to a clean channel and it kind of turns into a arpeggiated you know picking workout something like this It's basically A minor right there, and you're doing that backward kind of arpeggio pattern. So right there he's picking that A minor and then also adds that G on the high E string there. And then right there it's going to move to F major, a little partial F major. And then move to C major, and it's just a one finger, you know, C major form with the open G and open high E. And then add that G note again there on the high E string, and then move back to A minor again. The last example comes from the song Mist and Shadow, which this is also from High Country. And this is another one of my favorite songs from The Sword, and it looks like this. See, we're starting with this kind of implied chord progression and it's kind of moving from an implied A7 to a G to an E. So it starts with E, you know, almost that kind of blues based, you know, unison kind of slid drone idea. You know, think of Stevie Ray Vaughan, but it's kind of flipped upside down and, and different. And then right there, it's going to go to an implied A7. And then an implied G. So it's crafty the way, you know, it's just little pieces and dyads or double stops, but it's implying a chord progression. After that, it basically drops down an octave and starts rocking like this. And here you can see it's mimicking the first part where we've got this. an implied A7 once again, just that C sharp and G there on the A and the D string, and then move to a 
a G power chord and then down to an E power chord and it kind of just moves into that E octave right there that it mimics the first part. Such a cool song too. All right, that's gonna wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of the Sword, and I'm definitely a fan. You know, I've definitely kind of been drawn to their music. And initially it was just the you know, Guitar Hero connection, and I kind of thought of them as, you know, the band from Guitar Hero. And then slowly but surely, I think around the time I heard uh, Warp Riders, it just caught my attention, and I thought, wait, this is that band from Guitar Hero? And then the next thing I knew, I was obsessed. And I guess it was, what, two, maybe two and a half years ago, I really fell into an assord, you know, obsession. And I kept posting about it on Facebook, too. And I found Kyle on Facebook, and we're, you know, friends on there. But I went through and I bought all of their albums on CD and then I've slowly started buying, you know, some of their albums on vinyl too. And they're just a great band, you know, good, you know, good riffs, good guitar parts, good tones. I love the mythology and kind of science fiction and fantasy, you know, influences with the lyrics and the themes. And, uh, you know, it's just definitely, you know, my kind of band, you know, kind of a nerdy, heavy, stoner rock band with some progressive influences and a lot going on you know definitely a really cool band to check out so anyway leave some feedback and some comments please subscribe to late night lessons and i'll be back before you know it with more content and material thank you